let's look at an overview of urine formation. We already talked about the importance of bringing blood into the nephron. And then we have what's called glomerular filtration, where molecules are going to be pushed out of the glomerulus and into the capsular space. That filtrate containing water and nutrients, good things, as well as wastes, things we don't want, all goes into the renal tubule. In the renal tubule, we reabsorb the molecules we want to keep, the water and the nutrients and the vitamins and things like that. We also can have tubular secretion where we're taking additional waste molecules and directly putting them into the renal tubule. In addition to absorption and secretion, we also have to consider water conservation. Water conservation is very important because we push huge amounts of water into the nephrons every day, and we need to be able to reabsorb almost all of that to keep from dehydrating. So we'll consider these three parts, glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption and secretion, and water conservation one at a time. We're going to start with glomerular filtration. This is the process where water and small soluble molecules are pushed out of the glomerulus into the capsular space. This only works for relatively small molecules. Only molecules less than about three nanometers in size are able to work their way both through the filtration pores in the glomerular capillaries and to fit between the podocytes that are forming the inner layer of the glomerular capsule. So only really small things can get into the capsular space. That would be things like water, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, um, small fatty acids, ions, and also things like nitrogen waste, the ammonia and the urea and the uric acid we're trying to get rid of, as well as some toxins, um, hormones, and a lot of drugs even are filtered out of the glomerulus and into the capsular space so they can go out in the urine. Large things have to stay in the glomerular capillaries. This includes things like blood cells, as well as our plasma proteins that we've talked about before, the fibrinogen and clotting factors, things like that, and any molecules that are bound to proteins, anything bound to albumin or to one of the alpha or beta globulins is going to remain in the capillaries as well. One of the important things to consider with glomerular filtration is the rate at which it's occurring, or the glomerular filtration rate, the GFR. It's important that the glomerular filtration rate be managed so that it's not too high or not too low. If you have a high glomerular filtration rate, that means you're pushing a lot of fluid out of the capillaries into the capsular space. The problem with this is that the fluid comes through so quickly, there's not adequate time for reabsorption. So you might not be able to reabsorb all the nutrients, and you're not going to be reabsorbing enough water. This is going to cause a lot of urine to be produced um, that's very dilute and increases the risk of dehydration because so much water is being lost in the urine. On the other hand, you don't want a low glomerular filtration rate either because that means you're not filtering enough for the blood. You're not pushing enough of the waste molecules into the urine, so you get a buildup of wastes in the blood. In addition, because the fluid is moving more slowly through the renal tubule, there's actually the opportunity to reabsorb not only all the good things, but also to reabsorb some waste molecules, which will further increase the amount of waste in the blood, which is a big problem. A low glomerular filtration rate produces very little urine that's very highly concentrated. The glomerular filtration rate is determined by a balance of three forces. The main one that we've talked about already is the hydrostatic pressure, or the pressure of the blood in the glomerulus. The higher the hydrostatic pressure, or the blood pressure in the glomerulus, the more fluid gets pushed out of the glomerulus and into the capsular space. The lower the blood pressure in the glomerulus, the less fluid gets pushed into the capsular space. While the hydrostatic pressure is pushing out, we have other forces that are pulling back in. One of those is the osmotic pressure, which we discussed before when we were looking at the movement of water in and out of capillaries. As the hydrostatic pressure pushes fluid out, the osmotic pressure, all the solutes that are remaining in the blood, attract water back in. This force depends on the balance of the osmolarity of the filtrate compared to the blood. 
So if there's a lot more solute in the blood than in the filtrate, we're going to be pulling a lot more water in by osmosis. If there's not much osmotic pressure, if there's not much osmolarity in the blood compared to the filtrate, then we're not going to be pulling as much water back into the glomerulus. The final force affecting the glomerular filtration rate is the capsular pressure. There's really only so much room in the glomerular capsule. And if we're trying to force more and more fluid into the capsule, then there's pressure that builds up in the capsule that's pushing the fluid back into the glomerulus. So the higher the capsular pressure, the more fluid we push back into the glomerulus and the lower the glomerular filtration rate will be. Usually, capsular pressure isn't a big deal, but sometimes it comes into play when we've got a lot of fluid being pushed into the capsule, or if something's blocking the flow of fluid through the nephron, then you can build up higher capsular pressure. I'm going to talk about some numbers associated with glomerular filtration now, but I don't want you to remember them. I just want you to get a general idea of how these forces balance out compared to each other. The force of the hydrostatic pressure pushing fluid out of the glomerulus and into the capsular space is about 50 to 60 millimeters of mercury. The osmotic pressure, that's the force of the water being pulled back into the capillaries, is uh, typically about 30 millimeters of mercury. And then the capsular pressure, the physical pressure of the capsule pushing fluid back into the glomerulus, is about 15 millimeters of mercury. So if we do the math, we can see that there's a net um, force of about 15 millimeters of mercury pushing fluid out of the glomerulus into the capsular space. Anything that disrupts this balance is going to change the glomerular filtration rate. 